go, go, go! Target set to Mechato Rex. All units stand by for flank speed. All right, roger that. Hit him hard, everybody. All units prepare to engage with the enemy. Fire at will. <laughs> Direct hit! The air space is as good as ours. <laughs> you got a lucky shot. God. Shield holding. Whoa. Scare's picking up something really big. No way. Is that a... It's time for the gender reveal party. If we shoot blue, it's a boy, red as a girl. What the hell is that? It's a... a war son. It's a boy. Damn it, all units regroup. Focus your fire on that war son. Yeah, enemy war son down. It's too early to celebrate, boys. We've got more coming. Look. So you want an epic space experience. You want to feel the power of a mighty space civilization as you wheel and deal, but also demolish your enemies to become emperor. Well, look no further than Twilight Imperium 4. Yeah, let's head into this world of Mechatol Rex, Dreadnoughts, and space lines and turtles. Yeah, let's go. To give you this space game, this colossal box has a lot packed inside. You're gonna find all these components like the space tiles, cards, and tokens. But, oh, that's nothing compared to what each player is gonna get. Uh, okay, seriously, don't do this at home. It was a giant pain to clean up. So the gist of Twilight Imperium 4, otherwise known as TI4, is this. Everyone controls an alien race, and you're all vying to become the emperor of the galaxy through politics, trade, war, and of course by holding key positions on the board. To get the 10 victory points needed to become emperor, players will take turns moving and building ships, flipping one of these 8 strategy cards to use special abilities, and all the while, they politically maneuver their way to advantageous positions to score public and private objectives. Let's warp right into this popular space game, starting with the pros. And... Right off the bat, you can tell TI4 just has a physical presence about it. All of the art screams space, with a developed design everywhere that has just come a long way since TI1. The planet tiles are all super thick and have a nice heft to them, and the cards are just as solidly built. Of course, you got the 59 plastic miniatures for 6 colors, which are highly detailed and do a great job of standing up on their own. Like, look at that amount of precision on all the indented and sticking up parts. Actually, that reminds me, please, for the love of God, do not step on these because your foot, not them, are the things that are going to take the beating. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. Like, if you thought stepping on Lego pieces was bad, oh, no, no, no. These are a whole nother level of pain. For the rest of the components, the player boards are also amazingly built. And due to their comprehensive approach to having everything on one sheet, they can cleanly sneak in racial specific bonuses. And then there's these player aids that explain turn structure, but then can also hold stuff. What's a genius design is that you can pull them in and out from underneath the player boards, which is gonna save everyone some space while playing. There's also this handy dandy rules reference with the index on the back and eight dice, which is really nice to keep those combats flowing smoothly. And what's the ultimate peace of mind is that this game comes with a huge plastic insert. This is just so, so nice because, you know, there's just so much stuff in this game, but this also lets you store it vertically with few problems. Oh, and have we mentioned how this sturdy TI4 box looks on a shelf? Like, look at it, man, it just has this amazing presence about it. And man, we are not let down by the awesomeness in the world of Twilight Imperium. This game even gives you an amazing lore compendium to just straight immerse you in this vast, war-stricken universe. Like, look at this. There's, there's like poster images. And yeah, they're talking about these gray alien races. And here they are, all 17 of them. This sheer amount of just variety and factions, like, 
it's just mind-boggling for a base game. Like, no expansions, it's just, you just get all this straight up. TI4 just has so much going on for each faction, too. Like, at first glance, they got the flagship abilities, racial passives, racial technologies, but then they also have their own starting technologies, starting fleet, and planets that really get you pondering on how you'll choose to start this game off. So you got the more normal feeling ones like the Federation of Soul, which are basically, they're just humans. They just get a cool ability which airdrops infantry in any of your planets. And they just get more command tokens over now so they can just do more actions. But then you got the super wacky ones. Like, there's this virus, like just straight up a machine virus. You got, you got plants, except they're in space, so like just space plants. The plants can't even use space stocks to make infantry, but instead they use their plant infantry to produce stuff? Like, what? It, the virus can't even vote in elections. They can't research technology. They just, they just copy it from people whenever they want to fight. So, whoa. To really get you gripped in the mindset of each faction you're playing, just flip over to Sheep, and you'll see the entire backstory for that faction. In short, the game just has so much fun diversity that quickly encourages players to play geared towards each faction's specialties. Like, you're gonna be really, really geared into trading like crazy if you got the Merchant Space Lions, or being the speedy pillaging pirates if you choose the Mentak Coalition. The universe just manifests itself really well in other ways, too. There's flavor text on all the action cards, and they actually made the effort to put different flavor text on different copies of the same action card. That's, that's incredible! It's super engrossing, right? And reading these always just throws you deeper into the TI universe. But then, but then, what will be a sci-fi lover's dream is that each planet has an entire backstory, which really sets the stage well for this conflict as you're fighting across the universe where millions of space bugs, robots, and of course humans are shipped out to war. Now let's get onto the gameplay. How's that like? Well, it is truly fantastic. The game is really easy to learn with the included first game setup. But when you really boil it down, the game's turn structures are pretty simple. On your turn, all you're mostly doing is putting one of these command tokens on the board. Just go ahead and move your ships to that space within range. That's it for movement. If you want to take the planet, you'll just have to drop off infantry with the ship that can carry them. If it's empty, you can just get it. Grab that planet card, it's yours. If you have to fight for the planet, you just roll against any infantry. And to build stuff, just put the command token where one of your space stocks is and then just tap your planets to pay for the stuff you want to buy, the costs are all there on your player board. Now besides dropping a token, players can also use their strategy cards once a round. What is this? So, at the beginning of a round, everyone picks a strategy card, which gives them an extra special action to use on that round. This allows a lot of diversity in how you want to approach the strategy of each round. Do I want to go super aggressive and conquer a ton of stuff this round? Maybe I should pick Warfare. Am I running a little low on resources? Maybe I should go leadership or trade. Do I have mech to rex and just want to get a ton of victory points? Let me pick Imperial. Well, frickin' A, someone took it before me again. So because you can see what everyone else is taking before the round starts, you can also get a good idea of what everyone is trying to do, and then subsequently play around that. But what's this? Every strategy card has a part at the bottom talking about a secondary ability. What's that about? So this works. Uh, like this, when a player uses their strategy card, everyone else can also choose to use that card's secondary action as long as they pay a, a small fee. This keeps players super engaged during gameplay, because you have to constantly pay attention to other people's turns if they're using their action cards, so you can be like, huh, do I want to get stuff from that? And because everyone can improve from not only their own strategy cards, but also everyone else's as well, this keeps the pace of the game steady and flowing. So not every strategy card is going to get picked, and here's where TI4 borrows the classic Euro mechanic of putting some extra bonuses to incentivize people to take other strategy cards during the next round. So there's always going to be some diversity in what people are picking. But speaking of satisfying, we also noted that the command token mechanic, you know, the thing you use to move ships, it's really well done because they're divided into these three distinct pools. We got ourselves, we got tactics, okay, we got fleet, and we got strategy. Tactics is what you use to move. A fleet is your total ship capacity in a one hexagon, and a strategy is used to pay for other people's strategy cards, like the thing we were just talking about earlier, you know, the secondary ability of a strategy card. Because these are public, players can always see what others are capable of. But they're also nice to slow players from snowballing out of control, because no matter how many battles you can win, you can only move so much due to limitations on tokens. 
Also, you can rearrange these at the end of your turn, which adds some very nice management decision making. Let's get on to what you're here for, though, is how to blow your enemy ships right out of the sky. Well, we have found that this is super exciting and really simple. All that happens is that each ship rolls one die, and then it has to roll at or above its combat number to hit. Again, this number can be easily found on each faction's board. So players will keep shooting at each other until one side decides to retreat. Each ship normally has one health, and these bigger ships can get damaged, which means that they basically get slumped over when taking one damage and then get repaired at the end of the round. We found that this combat is not only super satisfying to roll tons of dice, but also doesn't force gameplay to a complete halt when the many space battles do occur. Points. Okay, so let's talk about how you get points. You're going to get one secret objective in the beginning, but you're mostly going to be going for these public objectives that slowly reveal themselves. This system is actually perfect for a space opera. It's constantly telling people to just go out and do cool things. There's a huge variety of gameplay goals, like getting technologies, conquering systems, or spending trade goods. These are all driving the game forward in some healthy way because they encourage expansion and upgrades. And it doesn't encourage player elimination. There's only one late stage objective that asks to go attack someone else's home base. So as a whole, this system is so great because players are incentivized to go out and do crazy things. You're not going to get punished too hard if you do lose a couple of fights. If you do fall behind, the game isn't punishing because it's super easy to just build an army to defend yourself. Since there are diminishing returns on buying for those who are stronger, if you're backed into a corner, you can just cheap fighter or infantry spam. And there's not going to be much death balling for most of the game, because remember, there's fleet limit restrictions. Alright, so I know the game does have space turtles, but this is absolutely not a game where you can just turtle in terms of gameplay and expect to win. Turtle. It's important to TI's identity that players are going out and asserting their will on the galaxy and at a wide variety of things. So while everyone will be going out and trying to do things, there's going to be one focal point that for sure isn't going to miss anyone's attention. The very center tile that is Megatol Rex. This singular focus is going to channel a lot of fun drama throughout the game, as players fight over it for victory points and political power. You get one quick point if you win the early mad rush to snag it, and the Imperial strategy card will just give you a point if you own Megatol Rex any time in the game. So no one, and I repeat, no one, will be owning Megatol Rex for very long because it's in such high demand. Okay, okay, you stubborn little dickhead. You really want to be the king of the hell, huh? Okay, well, good luck staying there because even though you have a ton of political power from the six influence the planet gives you, it has no resources whatsoever because the planet is an overdeveloped wasteland. So, yeah, you could try to dig in and build a base there, but you're always going to be surrounded, and typically the best strategy is just, just get out before your army gets blown apart. And on top of all of this dumb drama, there's these colorful wormholes that can just treat spaces as next to each other, even if they're across the goddamn board. This makes movement always so dynamic, since the game will always give you this opportunity to just be in multiple places at once across the entire galaxy. More things that make gameplay dynamic are these diverse action cards that you'll constantly draw that'll give you more tactics on how to achieve uh, your points. There's the plus one movement cards called flank speed that you use to just blitz someone, or how about calling in a plague on your enemy citizens? And then there's also sabotage to defend yourself against other players' action cards. There's also like 80 of these action cards, so you're not really going to be seeing repeats. I mean, even if you do, there's different flavor text, so bada bing bada I just spit on my mic. So we did mention secret objectives before, and these are great to add uncertainty to other players' motives, but they're also pretty well thought out. They only ever give one VP, and you can't ever do or hold more than three of them. So players can't just keep digging through the secret VPs to try to get the easy ones. In this interconnected world of Twilight Imperium, you can't do it all alone, and the game will encourage you to start talking and keep talking about shifting political alliances. Your alien race is going to be spread thin because of victory point incentives, so you can't just do everything yourself and expect to win multi-front wars. Instead, this game increases the richness of its intergalactic narrative by encouraging loose alliances, especially for when the political phase rolls around. Oh, and super cool, this political phase doesn't happen until someone kicks out the custodians of Megatol Rex and takes the planet. 
This unlocks the Galactic Council so that the voting can begin. So the voting power of everyone is actually based off of the influence of each of their planets, which makes a lot of sense. Especially because whoever owns Megatol Rex, which you know is the political center, is gonna have a plus 6 to their voting strength. So when the agenda phase comes at the end of the round, the Speaker of the Council will draw two agenda cards for players to vote on. Guys, this phase is no joke. So these intergalactic policies can actually give special statuses to certain players or planets, but most importantly, can sometimes change the rules of the game. Yeah, Twilight Imperium is super unique in the fact that certain politics cards called Allahs can just change the game's rules. There's stuff like anti-intellectual revolutions, making research and technology more punishing. Fleet regulations, to keep army sizes uh, at a certain size. Yeah, Geneva Conventions. And then probably the best, wormhole reconstruction. This one lets all wormholes be adjacent to each other and it just opens up the map, like, what the f- So all of these political cards uh, with a for or against vote outcomes make the talking in this game even more important, because you definitely can't just clock out of what people are doing and just just be the space villain, all right? This, this politics phase is gonna encourage people to just keep all these loose promises around, all these arguments and just things on the back of your mind constantly. And then, of course, you're gonna find out who's on whose side just by doing this. Politics really does a great job of just slowing down a game if someone is getting too powerful too fast. And of course, giving utility to plants that don't normally have that much material, but also have a bunch of voting power. If you're really strong and really need one agenda to go, your way or not your way, you're not in a complete rut though because you can boost your vote count with trade goods, which are basically TI4's liquid cash which can be used for anything. But good luck paying for that more than once because remember there's two agenda cards that will resolve. So there's a nice balance where the person using the politics card has to choose a new speaker which freshens up political balance as the speaker always votes a last and a breaks ties. So let's talk a little more about trading. The way trading works is that everyone can have these commodities but they're gray and useless until you trade them, at which you'll grab your trading partner's commodities from them and flip them to the golden yellow side. To trade, all your partner has to be is adjacent to you on the map, which is easy to do, but also great encouragement to stir up some war drama. Oh, okay, so you're afraid of drama. Well, okay, how about using these binding deals that are called promissory notes? If two players really can't trust each other's words but still want to trade, ceasefire may be the thing you need to ensure some type of peace. Oh, and then there's these awesome racial promissory notes, which can make forming alliances with certain factions super exciting. These can punish your partner in a way specific to their race if they do break an alliance and attack you. But going back to the trade goods, having them is so useful, since they can be used at any time to boost production or influence, which enables for some occasional swing turns as you spend them to suddenly fulfill an objective, make a huge army, or research two technologies. And this wouldn't be an epic space game without your technologies to make your alien race stronger and stronger. And you can do all of that in TI4 while not getting a headache, unlike in TI3, which has this weird tech web. Like, what the flippity floppity is going on here? It's such a nightmare to look through. This has gone completely clean up in TI4. And thank the galaxy sci-fi lords that now every single technology just needs a color prerequisite before you can buy it instead of a specific technology. And there's also planets that will help with these prerequisites as some planets have a unique symbol to help pay for technologies. And this will again stir up drama as people fight over these planets for a better technology engine. Now these color prerequisites ask for players to stack colors to get more advanced techs, encouraging players to specialize and this research down one path thing actually ramps up the game faster as players quickly decide and then build towards uh, their ideal crazy technologies. Example time, like players they can get this fleet logistics car which lets players go twice on one turn, or how about an assault cannon on all your ships which literally blows up one of your opponent's ships before they can even lay a finger on you. And of course there's the amazingly fun ship improvements which are researched by uh, the same method but when you get them, all you have to do is you take the card, you cover up the old ship on your sheet, and bam, upgrade complete. My god, that is pretty. That is so smooth, super easy to see that you've upgraded, so you'll never get confused. These not only make your ships hit harder, but sometimes let them carry more units or move twice as fast to surprise your enemies. And we have to remind players yet again of uh, the asymmetry in TI4. There's not one, but two racial techs for each faction. These can give new types of ships that 
only that faction can get, or just amazing abilities they will be able to constantly use. These generally are really strong and go hand in hand with the faction's playstyle. So players, they're pretty encouraged to get them, but they're also pretty expensive. We like how, you know, they are expensive, so that players usually won't be able to just grab them until mid-game as they have to get other, more basic tech first. So don't worry, it's not like, oh, I, just, I just get railroaded into getting my racial tech first, there. Like, no, nah, you actually gotta think about how you get it, if you decide to even get it at all. So TI4 is by no means just a long game. It can take at least four to five hours to complete with experienced players. So a major concern for these longer games is downtime. But we're proud to announce that TI4 doesn't really have that much downtime. Yeah, you won't really ever have a lack of things to do or think about in this game. You're constantly discussing trade or politics, thinking about what to upgrade or buy, or sifting through your action cards for your next major war expedition. The list just goes on and on for this game that just flows amazingly well. Maybe that guy is getting a little too close to that wormhole for comfort. I better talk to him about that. Or I really need that guy to play his strategy card now so I can get the benefit. Is there a way I can nudge him into doing so? Every mechanic in this game is rather simple in nature to not overwhelm players, but still being thematically logical and thus progressing this grand story. One other cool quick thing, you may have noticed that there's hexagonal space tiles. And yep, you may have guessed that that leads to variable board setup. The game includes this very fun drafting method for players to make their own boards and to further increase the chance to flex your TI4 skill levels. There's just so much replayability in terms of board setup as you move wormholes, differing planets, nebulas, and asteroid fields around. And that's only if you feel like moving on from the pre-made ones that still excite us to this day. To wrap up this gigantic list of pros, we will end with the best thing of all, and it's that the theme just meets the gameplay here just so beautifully. Mwah. There's a very picturesque flow of events as every single action is taken in this game. The game is just so easy to imagine. There's not really any actions that are super abstract. Like, heck, a large part of why this game is so easy to grasp for newcomers is that players, they can just kind of get a good gist of how and why something is happening without even understanding, like, the specifics of the rules. With the art, the flavor text, and the different play styles of the factions, the ease of imagination just slides right into just literally everything you're doing. Like... So this makes the politics incredibly easy to talk about. You're always going to have something to just be talking about. So let's talk about what we found was not so good about this massive space game. And a slight issue we found was some imbalance. Now this is the most impactful in terms of the races. Some alien races are just clearly better than others. We found that the Jolnar has particularly spiked debate. The Jolnar scientists are insanely good at getting techs which can net them some incredibly easy victory points if the objectives line up in the same way. Another strong race is the Soul, which are just really good at beefing up any location due to their passive, which is combined with their already really strong marines. This can let them hold onto key locations for really not that much effort, which can really bust other players' balls, especially if that place is Mechatol Rex. Go, go, go! Standing by! What we concluded for the slight imbalance is that, yeah, this is kind of annoying, but really not too big of a deal because first of all, politics plays such a big deal in TI4 that table discussion can smoothen out a lot of these imbalances in power. The chumps that are Jolnar can get militarily smashed, and the soul is not guaranteed points to break the game's balance. Now for the second thing, there's 17 alien races to play in the base game. This is an insane amount of variety and we can't really fault them for some slight imperfections with so many available races where many are clearly very balanced around each other. Another counterpoint to the imbalance, and we're not sure if this is intentional or not, but the Soul just feel like the perfect beginner's faction. They're just very vanilla in terms of their bonuses, like they're literally the only humans within this intergalactic universe. We found that the Soul is amazing for newcomers playing against seasoned veterans, and the newcomers maybe don't want to deal with crazy alien abilities yet. A card that we found was an issue was the support for the throne card. See, this card just straight up gives a point to whoever you give it to, which can lead to some really dumb king making, uh, especially in the late game. This should have had a clause that you can't give it to someone who has more points than you, which would add a lot more negotiation around this card instead of two people just trading supports for the thrones between each other. On the realm of politics, we found that the politics phase sometimes can be lackluster if there's two agendas that don't really do much to affect your board state. 
To avoid this, we would have liked to see the politics tower maybe just be a little stronger, like probably scrying more than two cards so that the politics guy, they can actually adjust the preferences way more to their own liking. As it is right now, sometimes politics just too unimpactful. You don't even really care about what's being voted upon. When both politics cards end up being unimpactful during voting, people feel inclined towards abstaining from voting, which can just make the phase feel dry. Like, oh geez, I have all these plants with tons of influence. I don't even really get to use it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, and a quick issue we also had was on iconography. Now, the whole tactical planet shtick can get confusing when some cards refer to a planet as their name, like industrial or hazardous, but don't show their symbol, which is how they're reflected on the cards and board. And then we got a nitpick for you guys, which is the insert. Now, I know how we talked about how amazing this is, but the fact of the matter is that it's not perfect because you gotta buy some plastic bags for each faction's components. Oh, and then there's a typo on this card. Now that we've covered that gigantic list of pros and cons, let's get into the scoring. So here at Shelfside, we're first going to give you the recommender score, which is how we try to evaluate the game given our list of pros and cons. And then the two of us are going to give you our own personal scores, which is how we personally feel about the game. Yeah, this is a big game, so there's a lot of pros and cons up there. Twilight Imperium 4 is going to get a 10 out of 10 from us. Yes, it is the definitive space opera game. Now, Twilight Imperium has a lot of things going on for sure, but it is relatively simple for its massive scope and always thematically logical so that players can grasp it and never be overwhelmed. What should scare people in this game is the other players from all the politics that is encouraged not the mechanics. The board is both beautiful and easy to keep track of with these amazing 3D minis, and everyone is comfortably seated behind their player board that gives them everything they need to steer to victory. Even stragglers are able to frequently catch up due to the diminishing returns for the winners. We point this out to show how politics always ends up being such a strong balancing force in TI4. There's going to be final rounds where many players are 1-2 to two victory points away from winning. As for player count, which we didn't mention anywhere yet, yeah, the game holds up for 3 to 5 players mechanically, but we would really recommend playing with 6 players to get that full TI4 political experience. Yes, rounds can easily last 45 minutes to an hour in the mid to late game, but does that even matter in such an epic experience like this? You're gonna be so engaged in this rich, grandiose tale where so many things are just happening even when it's not even your turn. Like, so many thematic situations are gonna arise as dreadnoughts fly across the board to retake Mechatol Rex, or you got all these alien diplomats that are just arguing on, like, really dumb political mandates that will, like, literally change the rules of the rest of the game. This game clearly isn't for the faint of heart, just look at the box and actually give you all you need to know about this game's scope. Oh, Jesus, that is a dummy thick. But luckily, newcomers won't we'll all have to read the 40-page rulebook. Like, a lot of the rules, they just made thematic sense. And the player aids, they're wonderful. And another thing about approaching this game, luck is going to be a big factor in everything that happens. There's so much nonsense that you just cannot control in this game. There's random dice rolling and all sorts of face-down cards, but the game's outcome is nonetheless very representative of skill because you have to constantly adapt to the board and also how you talk to others. And this ties beautifully into the theme. There's a hell of a lot of things that just kind of happen in a giant space opera. Like, come on, you shouldn't have full control, but rather finesse and adapting with the tons of tools the game gives you. There's complaints that this game is just this big, dumb, bloated space mess that takes way too long, or cool stuff kind of just happens for no reason, and there's not much strategy, all right? But in that, we would say it's impossible for a game like this to have this much variance in dice rolling, action cards, hidden objectives, yada yada, without having these incredible politics that really just help balance everything out. What we've gotten from this thinking is that Twilight Imperium 4, despite its massive time length, huge scope, and tons of mechanics, is actually a game that promotes a casual mindset. Yeah, kind of crazy, huh? Okay, yeah, so the thing is, is that even if you play 100% efficiently, you're never going to win TI4 without politicking well in some way. Everything on the board that happens is always going to be just a talking point at the end of the day, because the people are the key part of Twilight Imperium. Friends are just going to be able to easily mess with each other on the tight board, not to mention that there's tons of aggressive action cards. 
And of course, the politic cards are going to throw a big wrench into machinations. Like guys, check this card out. It's called Exion? Exion? I'm not really sure how to say this actually. Some, some type of artifact card. Uh, anyways, this card has a 50% chance of just nuking Megatol Rex off of a vote. This just really shows you how much politics ties into the randomness of TI4. The game just wants you to focus on the incredible theme, politics, and story that will always arise. So just don't tunnel too hard on winning. Rather, celebrate how awesome the experience is. And you will find that on many an occasion, everyone is on their feet on that final round to see which action card or die roll will determine the fate of the universe. So when we're reading online, people are going like, oh, GI4 takes half a day to play, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, no, this, this is your one way ticket to an epic space civilization battle to crown the new emperor of the goddamn galaxy. Like, you are laughing and attacking your best buds for an experience around a big, 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 epic, nonsensical game in space that will leave timeless memories. This is the definitive long space opera game that many sci-fi lovers will mark their calendar dates to play year after year. Potluck for food, or just play it over the course of multiple days. Whatever you do, just find a way to play TI4, because it is one of the most satisfactory experiences we've ever had, from a mechanical, political, and thematic standpoint that just culminates into a masterpiece. For my personal score, I'm going to give a TI4 a... 10 out of 10! Hands down, my favorite six-player area control game of all time. Like, nothing comes close to the consistent amount of fun and excitement that this game brings. This is 100% the gold standard that I end up comparing a lot of area control games to, because chances are, whenever we have six people available in like half a day, Twilight Imperium is always the game that gets suggested without fail. And so, in order for anything else to hit the table, it basically has to go through the Twilight Imperium check. But yeah, Twilight Imperium has everything there for me. Tons of different factions, hilarious politics, very cool minis, tons of dice rolling, a crap ton of variety without insane complexity. Like, this game sits at the perfect level of being pretty easy to actually pick up and play, while also offering a ton of possibility throughout the course of a game without being overbearing. And also the fact that I'm constantly being dumb all the time always just makes for some really good junk food politics. Like, I love being able to just yell at people over the most inane nonsense in area control games. And Twilight Imperium delivers that gameplay for me in just in spades. Am I even a good diplomat? I have no idea. But am I constantly stirring shit up for no good reason? Oh, you bet I am. Anyways, the point here is that Twilight Imperium is my go-to space LARPing epic adventure, and it's such a good vehicle for delivering really stupidly fun stories. Okay, so my personal score for Twilight Imperium 4 is going to be a 10 out of 10! That's right, Twilight Imperium 4. Yes, this is the 10 out of 10 space war game for me. Oh, yes. 10, 10 out of 10. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of 10 out of 10s in this review. Uh, you know, not a biased review, guys. We used to bring this gigantic coffin over to friends' houses and just stake out for like eight plus hours because, you know, this is a much longer game than TI4. And we even added our own house rules to make kind of like a TI 3.5. So of course, when this fourth edition here came out, I just had to jump at it and oh my gosh, no regrets, ugh, no regrets whatsoever. I think space is one of the best universes for area control. And with Mechtel Rex and all of the objectives, I am never ever bored while hours just fly by. Do I take this tech or that tech or maybe that tech? Like they all look so cool. Should I decide to go really ham on Mechtel or just cozy up to my neighbor? Like, I'm pretty sure I'll always lose as Arborek, but I still want to play as Space Plants and just see what the hell happens. TI4 just brings out the best in what a board game can be for me. I'm constantly just talking to my friends or just touching these amazing components in this world of TI, and there's these amazing, amazing ships and amazing cards. Like, I wish I could project onto a movie reel what the hell is going on in my brain when I play TI4. It just takes every single sci-fi IP, 
from Star Wars, Star Trek, Dune, Battlestar Galactica, Starcraft, even Treasure Planet, and of course, Starship Troopers, and just molds it all into this amazing universe of TI, and now there's space lines, so that's hella cool. TI4 has kind of just gotten better over time for me. Like, I know there's a lot of novelty here, but with TI4, again, there's 17 alien races, and I'm constantly just thinking about how I could do different opening moves or how I should negotiate politically with another faction. I've only played four out of the 17 that are in here, and I'm only really comfortable with the Mentec, go Space Pirates, and yeah, there's a hell of a lot more adventures to come in this box. Thanks for watching our TI4 review. If you'd like to buy this game or any other games you recommend, well, we're rolling out purchase links in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. As always, a huge shout out to our patrons. We got John S, Manuel G, Brian C, Clifford H, Aaron W, Max B, Bora, Jeremy M, C, Marius M, Charlie P, Quinton S, Sam S, and Travis R. And we got our two mad lads of cardboard. We got ZL and Jeff L. Thank you guys. We got our Patreon link in the description below and subscribe to Shelfside. And also comment what your favorite TI4 race is if you've played the game. If not, go play the game. This game is awesome. Okay, bye-bye.